Presenting Elf Tales with adventure. Romance. Comedy. And danger. Roll tape and action. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop the music. Where are the dancers? This is supposed to be the gala Snow White opening number. Hi, Gordon. I'm sorry, but we're going to have to rethink this show. What do you mean? We've been rehearsing for a month, and it's my first directing gig. The legal department says we can't do the opening song and dance routine. But I've already spent most of the budget on costumes and cor... and an obnoxious-sounding brass section. That's not my problem, Gordon. I'm sure you'll come up with a creative alternative. How's this? We do Snow White as a documentary. A documentary cartoon? Sounds creative to me. Well, I have a plane to catch. Ladies and gentlemen, I present today's elf tale, Snow White, the world's first documentary cartoon. I still think that production number would have gotten us a lot of publicity. This program is about unsolved fairy tales. Whenever possible, actual wicked stepmothers have participated in the recreations of events. This show is not a news broadcast or a cooking show. Today's mystery takes us to the picturesque ski resort of High Ho. There, a beautiful young ski bunny has been forced into hiding following a bizarre series of attempted murders. There have been many leads, but so far, the baffled police have been unable to locate the suspect. Last week, you, the viewer, helped us apprehend that immature young boy in green tights who was flying over London without a license. And within two minutes of our broadcast about the reptile con artist Princess Kisser, a viewer called with a hot tip. Now that alleged suspect is behind bars. I'm Robert Stuck. Maybe somebody out there will help us solve today's fairy tale. Maybe that somebody is you. Whoa! Fire the graphics department! The world-famous ski resort of Hi Ho has long been known as the meeting place of the jet set, the elite, and the frostbitten. In that sleepy, happy community of dopey, bashful locals, a lithe young skier named Snow White appeared on the scene. In no time, Snow White had knocked everyone's socks off with her shushing. With a name like Snow, it sounds like you were born to ski. Do you have any other hobbies? Just cleaning house. I'm a compulsive cleaner. This is the first time in five years that you, Wicked Queen, haven't won this event. Aren't you envious? Me? Envious of that miserable little bimbo? Ah, that shame. Everyone in Hi Ho remembers the events that led up to Snow White's tragic disappearance. Oh, she was such a nice girl. And her room was so neat. And then, one day, she didn't come home. Uh, but she left such a lovely note. Uh, it said, um, buy another three cases of anti-mildew bathroom bowl cleanser. <laughs> Evidence provided by Snow White's ski instructor shed some light on her lethal game of hide-and-seek. Before Snow White came to town, the best skier in High Ho was a fun gal named Wicked Queen. Every day on her way down the mountain, Wicked Queen would always stop to ask me... Ask you what? Well, she'd look right into my mirrored ski goggles and say... Mario, Mario, with the tan, who's the fairest skier in the land? 
Oh, queen, fair queen, I'll say what's through. The fairest skier in town is you. But the day that Snow White moved to that winter playground, things changed. One theory is that Queen's envy drove her far, too far. After Snow White came to Hi Ho, did you have any further conversations with Queen? Oh, yeah. She might have said something like, yeah. Mario, Mario, you're so cool. Who's the skier who makes you droll? And what did you answer? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was something like, tough luck, lady, about your plight. My vote goes to that chick, Snow White. Shortly after that day, Snow White disappeared. Investigators can only theorize about what happened next. Ah! Quiet, or I'll make you watch eight and a half hours a day of the shopping channel. Ah! Who are you? Where are you taking me? I can't tell you. I can't say. Twenty questions. Was it a woman? Yes. A creepy woman? Yes. A creepy, eerie, scary, smelly, yellow-toothed woman in a red ski jacket? Yes, yes. Did she used to be an award-winning ski bunny? Yes! idea who it could be. Look! We're only a hundred meters from the middle of nowhere. Is that far? I have trouble with the metric system. I must leave you here. It's not very nice. I beg your pardon. It is very nice. You see, I was hired to cut off your toes and your fingers. Oh, gross. And then kill you. Double gross. But instead, I'll leave you here. Don't tell anyone. Bye. Bye. One of the more pleasant thugs I've met. Now how do I get it? Welcome back to Unsolved Fairy Tales. Our case involves the mysterious disappearance of Snow White, ski bunny extraordinaire. Alone in the woods, police have concluded that Snow White looked to the forest creatures for support. Thank you, my little wilderness friends. I must remember to give a large donation to save the squirrels. Sorry, Miss White. They won't be ready till late next week. Oh, well, someday my prince will come. What's that? Do I hear footsteps? Is that another cute, cuddly little forest creature? Hey, 
Don't sweat it, kid. This is only a reenactment, remember? A reenactment? Oh, what a relief. <laughs> Authorities believe that the bear chased the lovely Snow White through the forest to Dwarf Valley, a popular condo development. As far as we know, the bear had no obvious motive, but he aggressively continued his pursuit. Lock up your daughters, ladies and gentlemen. That ferocious bear is still at large. Just moments later, investigators surmise that the despondent thug paid a visit at High Ho Novelties. So in walks this despondent thug. I sell him some fingers and toes of the finest latex. Nothing cheap for this stuff. What taste. Police theorized that Snow White took refuge in the warm condo. Uh, anybody home? Think I'll make a cup of instant low-calorie hot chocolate. Something's coming over me. Clean! Clean! I must be clean! I can't control myself! Dreadful noise. If there's anything I hate, it's a whistle while I work. Meanwhile, surveillance experts uncovered that the neighborly thug paid a late night visit to an isolated palace. Who is it? Delivery. I have those body parts you ordered. Thank you. You can leave them on the step. You know. You're pretty nice for a thug. Our sources show that the cozy condo in the woods was rented to seven ski bums. G -g -g go ahead, S -s say it. Seven short ski bums. Someone's been eating our porridge. R -r -r Wrong S -s story. There's a beautiful woman asleep in my bed. Th that's more like it. Look. She's waking up. Hmm, where am I? A at the D -D Dwarf v Valley Condos. I I I'm so sleazy, and these are my fellow short ski bums. Uh, uh, flaky and hokey and tacky. I thought there were supposed to be seven of you. There are. The rest are out working. I thought you were ski bums. Well, we are, but we're also w w workaholics. And who are you? I'm Snow White. I think somebody's trying to kill me. That's like a major bummer. Would you like to hide out here? Oh, that would be super. I, I can't pay you anything, but I will clean compulsively. No problem. And so Snow White found domestic bliss with the seven ski bumps. <laughs> the very next morning, the pastoral quiet of the high ho slopes was broken with the sound of Mario, the ski instructor, conversing with one of his students. Mario, Mario, you're always right. Tell me who is dynamite. Queen, my skier's intuition says you still have competition. Threat! That means Snow White's still alive. I knew that thug seemed too nice. Investigators discovered that the ski bums had purchased a Nordic exerciser machine for Snow White. Presumably because the one-time bunny longed for her ski. A little roof repair was no big deal for the short workaholics. Every day they'd come home, eat a home-cooked meal, and chill out by the fire. Oh, I've never had so much attention in my life. <laughs> I'll have to tell all my girlfriends about the merits of short men when I go home. If I can go home. <laughs> she feared she'd have to hide from her heartless pursuer forever. Cheer up, Snow. 
Well, we'll buy you a new d -d dust buster. We're off to work now. Remember, whatever you do, don't answer the door. But Snow White was unaware that at that very moment, someone was gaining intimate knowledge of her whereabouts. Tell me not to do. Um, not to clean the oven. Mm -hmm. Not to take out the garbage. Hmm, I can't remember. Well, I better get the door. It's the fruit of the month, Club. I didn't order any fruit of the month. I guess I'll have to let this nice red ripe apple go to waste. Or will you open up? Sorry, Flaky's orders. Well, if you want. I'll just leave your special gift here on the doorstep. And I'll even take a bite to prove it's not poison. I'd appreciate that. Now, which side did I poison? I'll also leave you with this delicious cup of instant, low-calorie hot chocolate to wash it down with. Thank you. The famished Snow White couldn't resist temptation. She ate the apple, and washed it down with the hot chocolate. Well, I'm not poisoned yet. <laughs> Uh-oh. Spoke too soon. You know, Sleazy, I never understood why we carry these picks and shovels. Yeah, I could see if we worked in the mines. But we're waiters. Oh, no. She, she, she's been poisoned. It says here that this type of poison causes deep sleep, and the only thing that will wake her up is a kiss. No problem! A kiss from a handsome prince. That's a problem! The ski bums set up a kissing booth at the snow fair. Expert smoochers came from far and wide to kiss snow. Meanwhile, Wicked Queen competed in the snow bunny competition. And the winner is Wicked Queen. Now, Mario, tell me. Sorry, Queen, to mess you up, but I think Snow White deserves that cup. That's it. I'm leaving. I'm not even any good at murder. As we say in my country, ciao. Hope your cheap goggles are shock resistant. Our sources show that the kissing went on for days, until the townspeople had sore lips. But nothing could interrupt Snow White's marathon snooze. The seven short ski bums went on with their lives, but things just weren't the same. For one thing, their condo was a complete pigsty. <laughs> I, I th think there's just something wrong with this milk. What's the date say? 44 BC. If only we could get Snow to wake up. M -m Maybe we could find a place a little more upbeat for her to sleep than a co coffin. Wait, guys. I have an idea. I'm tired of these theories and reenactments. I want to meet this legendary Snow White for myself. I'm sorry. Uh, she's all tied up on the k, k kissing circuit. Well, is there any reason that I couldn't get involved? Well, we're limiting our k kissers to the skiing community. Well, then I'll just have to learn how to ski. Mm. Mm. So how was that? Tell me, Mario, who's the most promising beginner you've ever seen? Words fail me. Finally, the day came that the seven short ski bums allowed me to meet Snow White. She was making a hastily arranged appearance on the date connection game. Bachelorette number one, what is your favorite pastime? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, but I guess I'll have to say buying turbo 
charge sports cars for my men. <laughs> Thank you. Number two, what is your favorite pastime? Mm, I'll have to say boning a chicken. Hmm. What have I been missing? Now, number three, my hobby is skiing. What do you like to do? Mm -hmm. I'll choose bachelorette number three. I told you, today's bachelors don't want a girl with her own opinions. Good morning. Is there any old brand? Did I miss the news? She's awake! But I thought only a handsome prince could break the spell. Didn't you know that TV hosts have even more clout than handsome princes? Boy, do I feel rested. And so Snow White and I are about to live happily ever after. But there is still one unsolved mystery. The whereabouts of that notorious suspect, Wicked Queen. You can help us bring this dangerous fugitive to justice. If you have any information pertaining to this case, call the High Hole Police at 1-800-555-BUST-A-QUEEN. I've had it. You win. You are the fairest. Wait a minute. I made a mistake. After careful consideration, I concluded that Judge Whopper, the judge on the people's trial, is the fairest. You mean neither one of us wins? I can live with that. Another alleged heinous criminal off the slopes, thanks to unsolved fairy tales. You know, darling, you look remarkably like that girl who played you in those reenactments. That was me. I needed the extra bucks. Well, then let's blow this pop shop. I'm tired of trash TV. With your riches and my good looks, we can live a life of leisure as ski bums. <laughs>